1332, Chapter 2, Set Theory, Section 3, Using Venn Diagrams to Study Set Operations. Video 3, Drawing a Three-Set Venn Diagram to Represent a Set Operation. Well, honestly, what we're about to do is exactly like what we did in the previous video, so I hope you watched it. The main difference is instead of having two sets, we have three sets. So as a consequence, our Venn diagram has three circles instead of two circles. And as a consequence of that, our Venn diagram has eight regions, not four regions. Learning my lesson from the previous video, I've already got the Venn diagram set up for these examples. And I went ahead and listed the regions that comprise each set in the Venn diagram. For example, we see here that set A in this Venn diagram is comprised of regions one, two, four, and five, which could be seen by highlighting circle A and saying, look, I just highlighted regions one, two, four, and five. All right, so we got, I got a couple examples I wanna go through. First one is to draw a Venn diagram for the set A intersect, open parentheses, B intersect, C close parentheses, complement. Or in better English, a intersect the complement of B intersect C. All right, so we're gonna attack it just like we did before. We're going to first decide what order we're going to build this expression according to the order of set operations. And then we're going to build that expression using the elements for each set listed in terms of regions. So let's start by redrawing this operation that we want to build this expression that we want to build and determine in the correct order in which to build it. Parentheses goes first and inside the parentheses we have an intersection. So this will be our first operation to build. That completes the parentheses. So we look outside of it and continuing with the order of set operations, complement happens next. So that would be second. And then the last one would be this intersection here. So once we build that third expression, we'll know exactly what regions to shade. Let's start with B intersect C. And remember, when you're building a, an expression and trying to find the elements that that expression contains, make sure you know the previous expressions to refer to, excuse me, previous sets to refer to. In this case, we're looking for the intersection of B and C. Here's set B and C. So we look at that and we form the intersection. The intersection is what they have in common. So looking at the two highlighted parts, what do they have in common? It may be a little tricky to see here because this is just a big old mess of V's and I's. You could also think of this visually. In a Venn diagram, the intersection is where two circles overlap. Where do circles B and C overlap? Circles B and C overlap right here. Now, if you were thinking, no, it's just region, it's just this region, you're not wrong, but you're not completely right. B and C do overlap there, but they also overlap here. And if your argument is, but A also overlaps that, and my reply is so, does this say anything about A at all? No. So it doesn't care about circle A. It's almost as if, it's almost as if you were ignoring circle A because right now you're not thinking about circle A. If I can get circle A, come on, there we go. Now where do B and C overlap? Aha, uh -huh. regions five and six. Let's put that circle back there. All right, so no matter how you slice it, B and C's intersection is region five and region six. Whether you look at it from a visual perspective in the Venn diagram, or you look at it from an element level perspective, they have five, and six in common. All right, so that's B intersect C. Our second move is to find the complement of B intersect C. Now, if you notice, I did not list the universe in our list of sets as collections of regions, but the universe is all eight regions. So for the complement of B intersect C, we simply have to look at our previous set and take its complement within this universe. This universe contains the numbers one through eight, the regions one through eight. So our complement needs every number one through eight except the ones currently highlighted. So no five and no six. One, two, 
three, four, no five, no six, seven, eight. All right. So there's our second move. And for our third and final move, we have to take an intersection of the thing to the left of the intersection, which is set A, and the thing to the right, which is the parentheses. So which sets do we need to find the intersection of? Well, set A, which is right here, and the complement of B intersect C, which is what we just found. So looking at those two sets, what do they have in common? And so we have to be really scrutinous because it's a big old mess of I's and V's. I would just take it one number at a time. They do have a one in common. They do have a two in common. Is there anything else they have in common? A four. And that's all. Because the only remaining element in A is five, but there is no five in, there's no five here or here or here. So it looks like the intersection of these, uh, this last intersection is going to consist of regions one, two, and four. Meaning that in our Venn diagram, we would shade regions one, two, and four, which kind of looks like this. Almost looks like a Pac-Man shape. I know I'm spending more time shading than I probably need to, but my OCD won't let it go. <laughs> there we go. Not bad. Now, some of you might be thinking, do I have to do all this to figure out what shade in? My reply is, I don't know. Do you? Can you look at this and verbally argue why those three regions would be shaded? I'm going to attempt it using ands and ors and nots and insides and outsides. We need the regions that are inside of A, done, and outside of this intersection. Well, here's circle A, so I need things inside of A, but I also need things outside of the intersection of B and C. This football is the intersection of B and C. So I need regions that are inside circle A, but not in that football, regions one, two, and four yet. If you didn't follow that verbal explanation, I totally understand. It takes a lot of practice to be able to look at an, a, a set operation like this and argue that these are the regions we need to shade. But this is why I give you the algorithmic approach so you don't have to make that mental determination. Let's take a look at one more. Whoa. Draw the Venn diagram for the following set operation. A intersect B complement as a set minus the complement of C minus B. Now, I don't know what the answer to this is. I'm going to attempt to do this one verbally and then we'll see if, we'll write, if, see if I'm right by going through it algorithmically. And if you're wondering if I paused so that I could figure out in advance, I did not. I paused because I needed to take a big drink of Gatorade and I didn't think you needed to watch that. Okay, so let's get into my brain for a second. I know I'm gonna take one thing and remove something else. So let's start with the thing I'm gonna begin with. A intersect B complement. So I wanna know what's inside of A and outside of B. Which regions are inside of A and outside of B? Inside of A and outside of B. That would be these two regions. Inside of A and outside of B. And from that, I'm gonna subtract the complement of C minus B. This is where it might get a little tricky. C minus B means I start with C and remove where it overlaps B. C minus B is here. But then I want the complement of that, which is everything except those two. Now, if you're following this, great. And if you're not, don't worry. We're going to do it algorithmically. But this is just to point out that it's tricky, but not impossible to do some of these verbally. All right, so that was this. So I need the pink minus the orange. So if I took the pink 
and threw away anything that was also orange, I'm going to speculate that the answer is just region four. I may be right. I may be wrong. If you followed it, great. If you didn't, that's okay. But I wanted to go through the verbal approach because some people would rather just not go through all the steps. And those are people that I would like to call people who want to get things wrong. Uh, because what you're doing is you're, if you're trying to figure out the answer without working it out, what you're trying to do is sacrifice time for accuracy. You want to do something faster at the risk of doing it incorrectly. And I understand because time is valuable, but guess what? Your grade in this class is not based on the time that you do or do not spend. It's based on the accuracy of the results that you give me and the work therein. So if your ultimate goal is to get a certain grade in this class, you should spend more time, you should invest more in accuracy than in time. So I will always take something that increases the chances of getting an answer correct over something that increases the chances of getting the answer faster. All right, so enough dilly-dallying. All right, let's figure out the order in which we need to do this. We have a lot to decipher. We have a total of one, two, three, four, five operations. Inside the first parentheses, we have both an intersection and a complement. And between those two, the complement takes precedence. So this complement will be done first. That won't complete the first parentheses, so we complete it by doing the intersection second. Moving to the second parentheses, there's only one operation inside of it, the set difference, so that's gonna happen next, so that'll be third. And that will complete the content of all the parentheses. The only thing that remains now is the set difference and a complement, and the complement takes precedence. So that will happen next, fourth, and then our set difference will happen last, fifth. So we got a lot of processing to do, but I have confidence that we can do this. For first, we want B complement which you can either do, either do visually or at the element level. Visually, it's all the regions outside of circle B. At the element level, it is all the numbers in the universe except these. So however you wanna look at it, B complement is going to be one, four, seven, and eight. And in case you're curious where I looked, I looked in the Venn diagram, because all I had to do was look outside the circle to see what numbers were in B complement. Second, our second operation is the intersection inside the first parentheses. They intersect B complement. So why don't we highlight the two sets that we want to take the intersection of. A is here. B complement is here. And we want their intersection. Their intersection is what they have in common. Now I need to look a little more closely. What do these have in common? They have a one in common. They have a four in common. And that's it. One in common and a four in common. Oops. All right, one in common and four in common. One and four. And I'll be honest, I think we could have gotten that by itself, A intersect B complement, just by looking at the Venn diagram. Because in terms of inside and outside, this means what numbers are inside of A but outside of B. And the numbers that are inside of A and outside of B are these two. So maybe you can do a mix of verbal and algorithmic, but you definitely need to do it in the correct order. All right, let's move to the third step which is to do C minus B. If we were to do this at the element level, we would start with set C, which contains four, five, six, and seven. And from that, we would cross out anything that is common to B. It looks like that it would be five and six that would get crossed out because five and six are also in set B. So it looks like C minus B is going to be uh, regions four and seven. And again, that might have been easy to ascertain at the uh, Venn diagram level because I know how, Venn di how uh, set difference works in Venn diagram. You start with the first set, so we would start with set C. It's not what I wanted. So here's set C, which I'm gonna shade in two portions. 
And then you would remove anything that happens to be in B, which is those two regions, leaving us with regions four and seven, which is exactly what we came up with. Again, if you want to do them algorithmically or Venn diagram wise, that's fine with me. The algorithmic approach leaves less room for error. You just have to invest more time. All right, our fourth step is to find a complement of C minus B. Complements are usually pretty easy. It's just who from the universe is missing from our given set. In this case, our given set is this guy. So the numbers from our universe that are missing from that set are one, two, uh, three, not four, five, six, not seven, eight. And then finally, our fifth step, which is to take the set difference of two things. We need A intersect B complement minus C minus B collectively complement. And let's find the sets we need to do this to. You start with the first set on the left side of the minus. So we need A intersect B complement, which is right here. So we're gonna start with that set. One and four. And then from that, we are going to subtract what belongs to the second set. The second set being the complement of C minus B. So we ask ourselves, what does the green set have in common with the set that we just wrote down there? And whatever they have in common, you cross it out. Well, they have a one in common. So the one gets crossed out, but they do not have the four in common. Notice this four is not listed up here. So it doesn't get crossed out, which means our final set is just region four. And if I recall correctly, that is the set I said it was going to be, or the region I said it was going to be earlier. I feel better about that answer now. I do have one quick comment. Um, at the very last move, we crossed out just the ones because they were in common. But let's just say for the sake of discussion that four was up there as well. What would that mean? That would mean our answer is the empty set and you would shade nothing. It doesn't happen that often, but some set operations will end up being the empty set. All right, just the two examples for this video. Uh, and I tried to pick examples that were longer and more drawn out so that when you see shorter examples, they'll come off as much, much easier.